All right, this is Mehdi and Angelina. Today, we will introduce a mental model to improve your LM accuracy for your production rack systems. So today, we're not going to focus on any specific technique. It's more about the strategies. So you might be wondering, what options do I have for optimizing LLM performance? So we will address that in this video. And later on, we will tackle the million dollar question. What level of accuracy is good enough for production? So make sure you stay with us till the end. Let's dive in. Awesome. So if we want to start optimizing accuracy, what is the first thing that we should do? Great question. So before I answer your question, I need to explain these challenges of optimizing LLMs. So optimizing LLM is a very hard and challenging problem. And there are several factors that we need to consider. First of all, we need to understand where to start, which is your question as well, right? So there are several different optimization techniques that we can use to optimize LLMs. And why optimizing LLM is challenging? Because LLMs are essentially stochastic and non-deterministic systems. That's why it's, it's very important to make sure that they behave the way that we want. And for doing that, there are different approaches. We need to select the right method. And how do we decide which method is good for us? Again, I will explain that in this video. And another factor we, that we need to, to consider is to define the acceptable accuracy. Depending on the use case, then we have to determine what accuracy level we would expect from the LLMs. So there is a great mental model that I will go over and explain. Unlike many people that think it is a linear process where you do this and then you do that and then like linearly you just apply a bunch of techniques, in practice, it is not a linear process. So rather, we would consider it and describe it as a matrix. So on the right-hand side, you can see that I have this matrix. So there are two axes. One is the LLM optimization on one side and the other one is the context optimization. So when we're going to optimize LLM, we basically look at these two axes. So let me explain each one of them. So what is context optimization? Context optimization, the focus is on improving the model's contextual knowledge. In particular, when the model lacks or doesn't have the necessary context, for instance, it's not in its training data set. Or when the information of the LLM is out of date. Uh, or when uh, LLM requires knowledge of some proprietary domain, because LLM, again, has been trained on a particular data set and it didn't have access to that proprietary data set, then in that case, we are going to optimize context. So this access maximizes response accuracy. It's going to make sure that the responses are really very relevant. Question. Yes. Remember seeing a lot of people talking about other options for uh, adjusting things like context window lens, right? Making the context window bigger. That also affect the, the accuracy in response because you can feed in more. Is that part of this as well? Exactly. That's an excellent point. And I will get back to this point later on. Just keep that in mind. Bear with me. So this is the first aspect of optimization, which is we are going to work on the context optimization. And in this case, the approach is RAG, right? We have talked about RAG. This helps us to optimize the context by feeding the relevant references, things like that. Yeah. The other aspect of this optimization is changing the behavior of the LLM. So this is called LLM optimization. And for doing that, there are certain techniques like prompt engineering or fine tuning, right? Question. Yeah. yeah. So to summarize, what are the options that we have on our hands in order to optimize the LOM performance in our system? At least it's shown in this metric. We have RAG and we have prompt engineering. We have fine tuning and we can do all of those above as well. So now my question is, which one should I choose first? Which one should I choose next? And can they be combined together? And when should I use different methods? 
Fantastic. Yes. So this is the answer to your question, right? As I said, it is not a linear process, but basically where to start from. So the first step is we always start from prompt engineering because that's the cheapest and fastest approach. So we typically start from there. We write the prompt and then the next step is we will add a few examples into the prompt. So a few shot learning. Then we can add some retrieval. So instead of giving the, the examples, the few shot examples, we can just feed them dynamically based on some retrieval process. So this is where RAG comes into the picture. And then after that, we can go with a very small data set, 50 examples or so, and we fine tune a model, which now we are entering in this zone, which is you now the fine tune and RAG kind of area. From there, the next step would be that, okay, now that we do this, let's also tune our retrieval by adding fact checking some extra techniques there. The last step would be we combine both, which is essentially the last step of this LLM optimization. So you can see here, we have started from prompt engineering and then we jumped into the rag, then into the fine tuning and came back into the rag and again went to the combination of both. So this is the best mental model for optimizing LLMs. Question. So this is an example pass. We don't have to hit all the points here, right? The idea here is, first of all, it's not a linear pass. It doesn't go, as you do prompt engineer first, and then you do rag, and then you do fine tuning. You can go back and forth. Exactly. And then also, it looks like the reason that we go with from prompt engineer and then later into fine tuning and other methods is largely due to complexity and you know how much effort you need to spend on realizing these optimization techniques to improve your accuracy, right? So yeah. let's say prompt engineer can achieve the goal. Why go further? Yes. Yeah. So that's why it's very important to do evaluation at each step, right? Mm. So when you do the prompt engineering, right after that, you need to evaluate and see the accuracy. If that's mm -hmm. what you want, then you stop there. You don't need to just go any further. But mm. if it doesn't work as you expect, then you would go to the next step and mm. you just deal with more sophisticated approaches. Yeah. But by the way, I noticed that it's uh, interesting that we don't jump from prompt engineer to fine tuning right away. <laughs> Again, because the thing is we always start from the simplest like and low cost approach to more expensive and complicated. Cool. All right. So let's talk about prompt engineering. So prompt engineering is the first and often most effective step in optimizing LLM. For many use cases, it is often the only method that is required. For instance, for summarization, translation, code generation, things like that, prompt engineering can take us far enough. We can pretty much get very good accuracy, good enough accuracy, even in production. Prompt engineering actually forces us to define what accuracy means, right? Because the first step is just to define what you expect. And then that's the way that you describe in your prompt. And then we go from there and refine the prompt and just keep going. There are several steps or strategies to optimize prompts. Some of them is going to optimize the context, like context optimization. Some of them are good for LLM optimization is the behavior. Some of them is actually applicable to both of them. So for instance, writing clear instruction is an LLM optimization technique, right? Or, you know, providing reference text. This is something that we do in RAG. So this is uh, going to optimize the context. And some of them are applicable to both. All right. So now going back to one of your questions, earlier questions that you asked, and you said that, can we use very long context with prompt engineering? And that basically solve, right, our problem. Is that true or not? So mm -hmm. the thing is, prompt engineering in general is not scalable, albeit it is very powerful. And as you said, right now, the LLMs have a very long context window. So why not we just stuff another prompt and just use the prompt engineering to, to optimize LLM? But the problem is models usually struggle to maintain the attention across very large prompts with very complex instructions. 
So this is a very common issue that we discussed in one of the videos, which is called lost in the middle problem. So lost in the middle problem is when LLM doesn't pay equal attentions to all the tokens inside the prompt. So if the context window is very large, Usually the LLM pay attentions to the beginning and the very end, and then it ignores or care less to the middle of the context. So that's one of the common issues with LLMs. And if you are going to use prompt engineering with very long context, that's something that you need to be mindful of, right? We, we will attach the video link of loss in the middle problems that we discussed in the video description. So check it out. Awesome. So now that we have done prompt engineering and is it enough? How far can we really take prompt engineering? So the answer is it depends. And the way that basically make a decision is by doing evaluations. As I mentioned, after each approach, we need to do thorough evaluations to make sure that is it enough or we have to continue. All right. The next question would be, what if after prompt engineering, the model is still not working very well or the accuracy is not what I want, then what should I do? So the next step is what is represented in this diagram? We start from here and we do some prompt engineering. And then after that, we evaluate the system, the, the result from the LLM. And we identify that there is still some gap here. So now if the gap is somehow related to the context, meaning that the model needs very specific information to answer the questions because it doesn't have access to that information and that's the reason that the accuracy is low, then we can go with RAG solution. But if the problem relates to the behavior of the LLM, for instance, we are going to have an LLM where learn tone or the styling, right? The writing style. Then for these types of tasks, we can use fine tuning approach. So we have to look at what the problem is, what the gap is, and depending on the type of gap, then we can go to either retrieval augmented generation, or we can do a fine tuning. So I realized maybe I was wrong. In our mental model, we first actually went to RAG. So this is saying, actually, evaluate your situation. It's also possible that it's the LLM not acting consistently, and you should consider fine-tuning instead of going to RAG approach, right? Yes, that's right. I mentioned that we always start from the simple solutions, mm -hmm. and then we go from there. And although you can technically jump from prompt engineering to fine-tuning, but typically you would go with RAG solution. But if the task is not going to be solved with RAG, then there is no point of doing that. And nice. some of the tasks are, for instance, if you want to learn, if you want LLM to learn a specific structure, like the style of, or a tone of a language, things like that, RAG doesn't really help that much. So right. for that, then you would go to fine tuning directly. So it depends on the type of gap. Right. You, you have a last point here? Yes. And the last point here, these two are not exclusive. You don't need to just choose one. They are additive, meaning that you can combine them. You can come here and then go there, or just you can just do both of them at the same time. Mm. One more thing to add on this. In the future, we can expand this chart and just add another solution, which is a knowledge graph, which we also talked about in this channel a lot. That could be also part of the solution, but it's even um, more developed, right? Yes. The thing is knowledge graph is somehow related to this in-context memory because knowledge graph is going to feed the LLM with the specific information that it doesn't have. So it's part of the RAG, okay. but yeah, but it's just a different way of RAG, which is using okay. knowledge graph. Cool. All right. Now let's talk about RAG. We have talked about RAG almost in all of the videos before, so <laughs> I think everybody knows what a RAG let's, application. Let's talk about it for another two hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process of retrieving content to augment the LLM's prompt. We're wrapping up this session, but the best is yet to come. In the part two of this session, 
we will dive into fine-tuning, explore a combined approach, and finally, we will answer that big question, how much accuracy is good enough for production? So make sure you don't miss it. We will be releasing it in the next few days. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. See you next time.